the floor? We just said kinnis. What are we trying to achieve with all the kinnis that we say? We just said so much. What are we trying to achieve? There's a Rashi to the Taisvis in Kedushan Daf Lamaral from Abayz that explains the Tehillim Kapitel Ein Tes. It says, Mizmor la Asav Goyim Banach Losecha Timu is Heichal Kachecho Samo is Yishalayim Leim. What does it mean? The Pasuk means that the Goyim came and they made everything Tame. They made everything unpure in the temple. Ask them a Farshim, why does it say Mizmor la Asav? Mizmor means a song. Is it a song that the Gentiles, the Goyim, came in and they made everything unpure? It should say Kinnah Liyasuf. It's a Kinnus. It's very sad. Why does it say Mizmor? And the answer is Mizmor is the good spin on things. HaKadosh Baruch Hu could have destroyed Klai Yisrael for all that we did. And instead... Shafa Hamasoy al Aitsim Vahvanim Hashim took out his anger on the stones, on the bricks, Kabiachal, he took out his anger, and instead Klai Yisrael was able to stay and survive. That's why it's Mizmor Lasaf. It's a song. Hakarish Baruch Hu decided to take out his anger, Kabiachal on the temple instead of us, and that's how we're here. So that's the why it says Mizmor Lasaf and not Kino Lasaf. Says it Dubna Magid. You know, we always say him Eshko Khechi Ushalayim. Tishka Khimini, right? Our Simchasi. A Jew's Simcha is never complete. The Simcha of a Jew is never complete. What's the most happiest time of your life? Is you're walking down the aisle to your wedding. Before you walk down, what do we do? We take the ashes and we put it on our forehead. What do you mean it's the happiest time of the year? Happiest time of my life. And after Barachot, what happens? We crack the glass. Again, Yerushalayim. So a Jew's simcha is never complete. This month is called Chodesh Av. Like Rabbi Yanki said, Av means a father. Av also means El Ba. Chodesh El is coming. But Av means father. Can I ask you a question? This is probably the saddest month of the year. And that's the month you want to call father? Nisan! Pesach! Sukkot! We have a good time! Why would you want to call this month our father? It's the saddest month of the year. We can answer the question with a mushal that I heard in the name of Rav Schwab. It was a kid running around in shul, making a lot of noise. You know, we all have those... One little kid running around. So he says, you have a kid running around in shul making a lot of noise. And there's a guy who gives him a lolly. And the kid's quiet. Then he starts running around again. And all of a sudden, this man comes over to the kid and gives him a whack across the face. And at the same time as he smacks him, he goes like this. Who's the father? The man who gave him the candy? Or the man who smacked him. Which one is the father? Which one is the father? The one that gave him the candy or the one that smacked him? So you'll say, the guy that smacked him. Obviously that was the father, the kid that smacked him. So the, the same thing we could say is with Chodesh Shav. The month of Av is a sad month, but it's also a happy month. The Gemara of Abbasar Kuf Chafalv, the Gemara tells us, Lo hayom toivim li Yisrael, ki chamishasar ba'av. Two ba'av is from the happiest days of the year. So we see that in this month, besides for having that day of sad and mourning, we also have that happiness. Like the Gemara tells us, Lo hayom toivim li Yisrael, ki chamishasar ba'av. So isn't this the month to be called father? This is the month Rosh Kodesh Baruch shows us. Discipline? But at the same time, he shows us that love. And that's why I believe the month is called Chodesh Av. There's a newlywed couple. They got married. And unfortunately, they didn't have kids for a long time. After many attempts, 
<clears throat> they went through all the treatments that they had to go through. Baruch Hashem, the woman, was pregnant. Comes the fourth month, the doctor tells us things are getting complicated. We have to put you on bed rest. She's on bed rest. Finally comes the seventh month, she goes for a checkup. The doctor says, we have a major problem over here. It's either you or the kid. Who do you want to live? She says, come, we've got to talk to my husband. She comes, the doctor's in front of her and her husband. The woman turns to her husband. She says, I'm willing that you should take my life and our son or daughter, whatever it was, should be alive. But remember, tell our child, tell our son that it's because of me that he's alive. And she told the father, make sure you tell our son it's because of me that he's alive and I give my life for him. Says the Dubra Magir, HaKadosh Baruch Hu HaShafa Hamas Yalaitzim Avonim. He took out his anger on the sticks and stones. He gave up the base Hashem. He gave up his house. He gave up his temple for us. That's where the Shekhinah was. Why? So my kids should survive. And we should always remember, Em Eshko Chechi Yushalayim. And that's why we say Kinnis in depth. What was the original question? Why are we, what are we trying to achieve? We're trying to achieve that morning. We're trying to remember him. We had a temple. But not only that, Akarish Baruch Hu took out his anger on the Beis Amikdash. He destroyed the Beis Amikdash. And instead, what he did was, he said, I want my nation to live. And I want to give them a chance to build themselves up to bring back what has to come back eventually. Rav Gifto Zechon Tzadik Levrocha, who's an Archie Stroll. And he went to the, where we all go? Where do we go? We go to the Kaisel, and we go to Kever Achel. There was a younger man, a Kyle man came over to him and said, Shashiva, what moved you more? Was it the Kotel or Kever Achel? And he tells the kid, this younger man, not a kid, he tells him, he says, the Kaisel moved me more. The kid says, what? The Kotel moved you more? You're the first person who told me that. Kibar Rachel moves everybody, he says. That's our mother, Mama Rachel. Shashiva, why did Kaisal move you more? And her gifted tells him, young man, young man, you could relate to a mother. You saw your mother bench lift. Before Shabbat, you saw her cry. You saw your mother get up early and stayed up late to be with your siblings so you can relate to a mother. But he says, the only one who can relate to the Churban, says Rav Gifter, is one who saw Torah in its glory. A person who saw what the majesty of Klal Yisrael is, what the splendor of Torah is, would understand the Churban. He says, and I was Zaycha to learn in tells in Europe. I saw the splendor of Torah. I saw the, gla- I saw the greatest Rosh Hashivas. I saw what an Elul is. I saw what a Sarsi Mechuba is. I saw what it means to learn Musr. I saw what a Tishabav is. I saw what it means to learn Torah with the biggest covet. And then I saw its destruction. And then he says, I saw its destruction. I saw everything fall apart. After seeing what Tyra is at its highest level, after seeing what a yin is, and then I saw its destruction. It says of Gifter, I can picture what Eulerega looked like on Sukkot and Pesach. I can picture what Eulerega was like at the Beis Hamikdash. Therefore, he says, when I daven at the Kaisel. I could picture what Klai Yisrael was like when we had the Beis Hamikdash. That's what Rav Gifter tells us, young man. Says Rav Gifter today in America, where it's hard to witness the glory of Torah, we must try to understand as best as we can what the destruction of the Beis Hamikdash is all about. Because to relate to the Chorban, we must know what we are missing. Most of us are kids 
or grandchildren of Holocaust survivors. So it's hard for us to imagine what the Churban was like. Therefore, we need to put a little, little bit more of an extra effort so we can relate to the Churban somewhat. Says the Bishol Salanter, someone who mourns Yerushalayim, it could bring him closer to the Kodesh Baruch Hu. You know that feeling we have after Yom Kippur, we're in shul all day, or fasting, when it comes to an Elah, that last feeling, we all feel great. We feel so high. We feel huge. We feel connected to the Kodesh Baruch Hu. We think this is the year. That's it. This is going to be the year. We're going to have whatever we need. It's a certain closeness that we feel to Hashem. Says the Yisrael Salanter, somebody who utilizes, who utilizes the Tishim of the way we're supposed to have it, will be Zaycha to have that same closeness that you feel then, you'll be able to feel in Tisha B'Av. <laughs> that same closeness we have in Yom Kippur, we will be able to feel on Tisha B'Av. <clears throat> the Pasuk tells us in Ezra, Perugimel, Pasuk Yudbeiz, it says, "Barabim akoyhanim balavim v'roshi ha'avos hazakenim, asheru is by his rishon, so it is our bias by name, boichim mekol gadol." When Klal Yisrael returned to Eretz Yisrael, and the second the second temple was rebuilt, the koyhanim, the levim, and the roshi ha'avos, who were able to remember the first base on Mikdash, they were crying. They weren't happy with the second base on Mikdash, and as Rashi over there in the pasuk. What do you mean? You have the base of Mikdash, you have the temple. How weren't they happy, as Rashi? And he says that they knew the splendor of the first base of Mikdash, so they knew what they were missing. So that's where they were crying. But the youngsters who only saw the second temple, they were thrilled. They didn't know what the first one was like. So they were excited and they were all happy. Because they didn't know what they were missing. We all know this Gemara. I'm sure we all heard this <clears throat> Gemara a nice amount of times. What it literally means, who is Misabel and Yushalayim, will be Zoycha to see the Simcha of when the Beis Hamikdash is rebuilt. Isn't it hard to be Misabel on something? And we don't know what it is. But all we want is to be Masabo. We want to mourn. We want to have the mourning, right? And then we could be Zoycha Veroi Bissim Chosa. We'll be Zoycha to see whenever it is, Amet Hashem, when the temple's rebuilt, we'll be Zoycha to see that Simcha. And we all want that. But how do we do it? How do we mourn for something that we have no idea what it is? Sevel Nasan Vachvogel, the lekker Rish Rishimis, we don't have a base Amigdash, Amen Kubches. Do you know what the difference between mourning and not mourning is? This is mind boggling. He says the difference is Kechota Saira, a hair breath. Do you know what that means? The difference between mourning and not mourning says Rem Nasan Vachvogel, the Mashgiach, is a hair breath. So we think, how could you feel it? Because it's so far. We're so busy with all materialism. Says the Mashgiach, stop and think about it and realize how much we're missing. That alone will be Zoycha Veroya Bissim Chasa. I repeat again, if we stop now for a second, says the Mashgiach, and we think what we're missing, if we think what we really don't have, that alone will allow us to be Zoycha Veroya Bissim Chasa. Let's stop for a second and think about it. If we thought about it, we're just zaycha. Ra'i b'sim chasa. That's what Meshgiach says. Now that we were all misabel, I would like to help us all feel a little bit more. A little bit more. We're zaycha ra'i b'sim chasa. How do we feel a little bit more? We all know the famous Pasuk in Ishaya Perpez. Pasuk Gimel. Ki mitziyoin teitzei soira udvar Hashem Yerushalayim. What does it mean? Literally, for out of Tzion comes Torah, and out of Yushalayim, the word of Hashem. Why is it that someone grows when he's in Yushalayim? What is it? Is it the air? What is it? So as the Medrash explains, it wasn't just Yushalayim. It was the people of Jerusalem. 
It was the people of Yerushalayim. When people came to Yerushalayim, what happened? What did they see? They saw the great Kedusha of the Kahanim during the Avodah. When they watched the Kahanim with such sincerity, with such holiness, they became inspired. And their hearts would focus on one thing, learning Torah and fearing Hashem. And on this medrash of Aaron Cutler wrote, anybody who would watch the Vilna Gain, we all know the Vilna Gain, anybody who would watch the Vilna Gain was also affected and would automatically begin to learn and to daven better. Now let's bring it to us. I'm sure all of us, we also are Gadol or a Chacham in our presence. We went for Brachot. There were things we did. We went to Adam Chashev. And you know that feeling that we feel after we leave that Chashev a person? It's a good feeling. After he gives us a Bracha, or if we just watch him during davening, we walk out amazed. We feel elevated. That amazement that we feel whether it lasts us for one prayer afterwards or if it lasts us for another week or whatever it is. It's a great thing that we have. <coughs> Can we understand the Beis Hamikdash now? If you feel that by a Chacham that we go to today in 2017, we feel close to Hashem. We feel great. Could you imagine the Beis Hamikdash? Could you imagine what we're missing? The only reason why we feel close to Hashem after to the Chacham is because we see the godless that He has. But what's the godless? It's godless Hashem. It's godless Atayra. Could you imagine the base Hashem? Could you imagine the base Amikdash where you have the Ashra, Ashkina? How we will feel? If we look at it like that, we'll definitely be able to feel the Chorb a little bit more. To bring out the point a little bit more, the Vilna Goyim said, I could imagine what the Rishonim were what the Ga'inim were, what the Amaroim were, what the Tanoim were, I can imagine. But you know what I can't imagine? I cannot imagine what a Balabas, a regular working person, what they were like at the second base of Mikdash. Because the amount of Kedusha that they saw, the amount of Kedusha they had, put them on such a high level. It says the Ga'in, I cannot imagine how Chashiv and how great these people were. A regular person that's sitting and working. He's not regular. He had the Kedusha to base on says the Goyim. I cannot imagine what he was like. That's your question. We had the Chorim based on Mikdash. Why did we lose the temple? We did Averis. The question is, obviously we did Averis. It made us fall to a low level, and that's why we lost the temple. Wouldn't it be better for us to still have the Beis HaMikdash that would help elevate ourselves? Doesn't it seem a little backwards? We're sitting here a morning for we want to get it back. But on the other hand, we lost it because we did Averis. But if it would be here, we would have that Cheshik, we would have that Chuka to get closer to Hashem. So what was the point of destroying it? Shouldn't it be here and then automatically we would elevate ourselves much more? Says Rabbi Shem Shem Pinkis, it's the following mushroom. <clears throat> there was once an artist, excellent, excellent artist. Decided one day, he's going on top of the mountain, beautiful sky. He's going to paint a view of the sky on top of the mountain. He could see everything. It's going to be gorgeous. Goes up on the mountain. You can imagine how he's sitting sitting there diligently, and he's doing what he has to do, and all of a sudden, his friend comes up on the mountain. And his friend says, wow, you're talented. He wants to get a better glimpse. And remember, they're on top of the mountain, and his friend's backing up. He's like, wow, you're talented. And the artist starts screaming, stop, you're going to fall off the cliff, stop. And the man is still going back. Wow, it's gorgeous. I never saw something like that in my life. And he's literally a step about to fall off. And his friend has no choice. But after all his hard work and hours of putting in, he smashes the painting, and also his friend stops. He says, yeah, do you mind? You worked hours on that. He says, what do you mean? I'm telling you to stop. Your last step is off the cliff. My only way to save you is I would break the painting, and that's what I did. The same thing is with us, Claudius Yisrael. 
When Klai Yisrael had the Beis Amikdash, they had that Shrosh Hashchina. When they did a sin, what did they do? They brought a carbon. Now there was wiped out. No more. But you know what the problem is? They started doing a various B'mezid on purpose. And they said, oh, I'm going to do this. And I'll bring a carbon. I'm scot free. No problem. And then a VM. And the Gedolim were screaming, you can't do that, you can't do that. And they didn't hear anything. And they kept on doing that virus and they brought a carbon. And they didn't realize that it's not a kapara for them. And they were so into bringing the carbon. And they were, thought, that's crucial, it works. But really, it didn't work. So I Baruch had no choice but to break the base on Mikdash and to say, you see, it doesn't work. And now you got to work the other way around. We have to feel it. We have to work on ourselves to bring the base on Mikdash back. And that's why Kodesh Baruch Hu did it that way. <clears throat> I'd like to conclude with a fascinating story. I actually heard this from a mentor of mine. He has a grandchild, Rahman al Tzlan, that cannot talk. I think she has a trach in her mouth. Or him, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. And finally, they had a mahalach, they had to remove the trach and put it somewhere else, maybe in her neck. And now she's able to talk. However, that comes in, ma that comes in major yisurim. Every morning, the father has to give her shots, shot after shot. And my mentor, my friend, goes to see his granddaughter, and she's crying to him. And she says, Zaidi, Saba! Grandpa, my father's terrible. Every day he takes a shot, this girl's four, and he's giving me pain. Tell him to stop it already. And he looks at her and he says, what do you mean? He's helping you. You're just a small kid, you can't relate. But she says, he tells her, he's helping you. He's not helping me. I could talk, I don't know what he's doing to me. Every morning I get up, he gives me a shot. Why should I get up? He puts me through pain. And he tried to explain it to her. And obviously she's a kid. The little that she was able to get. And then he tells me, he says, Yitzi, when I saw this, I remembered what my father did. This is the girl's great-grandfather. What did his father do? His father, Nebuch, was sick. And he was in the hospital. And he was in a lot of pain. A lot of pain. And he calls the doctor over. He takes the doctor's hand and he gives him a kiss. I want to thank you for all that you're doing. I want to thank you for keeping me alive. I want to thank you for making the best <clears throat> of the situation. <clears throat> and he gives the doctor a kiss. Whatever Hashem does for us is the best. But at times we don't see it. Rabotai, are we the little girl or are we the grandfather? How many times does Hashem do something and we say, why are you doing this? For what? Why? Why? Are we that little girl who doesn't understand that we get a little clap, it's to elevate us? And the male we fall further and further? Or are we that grandfather who gave the doctor a kiss when in pain? And he said, thank you for trying. And we understand. And for like that, we look up to Shemayim and we say, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I understand what you're doing. And I'm going to take this as growing pains. I believe this is part of the Avoidah today. There's a lot of things today. But to believe whatever Hashem does it's for the best. We're not the little girl. We're the grandfather. Whatever Hashem does is for the best. If we have that look, will ultimately help us to do tshuva. We'll be zayichet to see the geula shleim b'mehir. Amen.